Merry Christmas. It's the holidays. I've got my badass ugly Christmas sweater on. Let's go make a holiday episode, huh? How about we? Ah, it's the holidays. And the holidays, you know, they always make me feel, feel so good. Well, except for when I worked in retail and they were just a grim reminder of our nation's ever-expanding worship of consumerism and how the bastards at the top don't give a shit about the grunts actually working in those retailers that are lucky if they even get a holiday off to take a break from their coupon wrapped hell. <clears throat> and since it's the holiday season, that means it's also fucking cold outside. And since I live in the California Bay Area, that means it's like, what, 50 degrees? Shut up. And as I sit here, cold and feeling slightly festive, I started thinking about winter in video games, specifically winter-themed levels in video games. It's a trope as old as time. Want to spice up the variety in your video game? Cover your stage in ice and snow, because what's a harsher force to deal with than nature itself? And while a lot of snow and ice levels can be a bit of a drag with slippy slidey floors or snow that slows you down, it is the holiday season and I don't want to think about the bad, I want to talk about the good. So I'm looking at the 10 best, or at least my 10 favorite, winter themed levels in video games. Some of them are obvious, some of them not so much, but regardless, it is a list that I made that's just that's just that's just go I'm already starting off with something unusual as it's not exactly a level so much as it is a time of the year Animal Crossing if you don't already know is a life simulator game where you live in a little village of fun animal friends who like you more than they have any right to the big selling point of the series is that everything happens in real time, and that includes going through the seasons, including the snowy winter months, and it just makes me feel so warm and fuzzy during a time where it's cold and miserable. Winter in Animal Crossing covers your entire village in white snow and brings with it fun activities like kicking snowballs, building narcissistic snowmen that give you furniture in their own image, and jingles the reindeer. Closer to Christmas, the trees can even be seen covered in colorful lights. Seeing those lights coupled with snowfall and the peace Peaceful music is, in a word, magical. Almost makes you forget about all the crippling debt you've accumulated playing the game. Uncharted 2 literally has you starting the game hanging from a train falling off of the side of a snowy mountain as you bleed to death and have to work your way to the top. Holiday cheer, everybody! But as cool as that scene is, Chapter 17, Mountaineering, and the subsequent Chapter 18, Heart of Ice, are the real stars of the snowy show. The Uncharted games are nothing if not absolutely stunning to look at, and the snowy peaks and icy caverns of the Himalayan mountains are some of the most impressive environments in the whole series. Scaling the peaks of the mountain and jumping from the many icy ledges is as exhilarating as it is terrifying, and it gets even more intense when these weird horned yeti monsters start coming after you. This all leads to a giant frozen temple full of clever puzzles and plenty of impressive parkour sequences. How does he not slip right off every single time? Dude's not even wearing gloves. All of this makes for one of the most memorable moments in a series full of memorable moments, and frankly, I absolutely love it. The winter holiday season is typically pretty magical and comforting, up until mid-December when you realize you have to go shopping and deal with all the bastards who waited until the last minute to buy gifts because you are also a bastard who waited until the last minute to buy gifts, and then it's just the worst. This feeling is enhanced when you live in California because every time you go out, you get to deal with California drivers who do shit like this or honk as soon as the light changes green and you haven't moved yet, it's been three seconds, my brain hasn't even processed that the light has changed, why are you fucking... So when you need a break from all that vehicular angst, sometimes it's nice to just blow up some polygonal cars. Twisted Metal 2 for the PlayStation is a game that, despite not having aged particularly well, is one I come back to time and time again, because it's just fun to blast cars into oblivion. Each of the various stages are based on real-world locations, like Los Angeles, Paris, and Hong Kong. But probably my favorite stage in the whole game is Antarctica. Not only is it the only ice-themed location in the game, the stage's gimmick is pretty intense. As the battle goes on, more and more parts of the stage start to fall into the sea below. It's incredibly nerve-wracking to have to constantly be aware of the environment and whether or not it's going to fall, but it's also oh so satisfying when you can get an enemy stuck on one of those falling glaciers. This stage made me so anxious as a kid because I was always afraid whatever glacier I was on was just going to start collapsing into the sea at any moment. Eh, who am I kidding? This scares me even now. Just sitting there, fighting for your life when all of a sudden, everything starts to rumble. And all you can do is sit and watch as the world comes crumbling down all around you. 
Just like real life! <laughs> Undertale is one of my favorite games, and possibly one of the greatest games ever made, and I have no reservations in saying that. Sometimes you just need a game to make you feel a feeling, question your own existence, and leave you wondering whether or not the feelings you've developed for this goofy skeleton man and this badass fish lady are perfectly normal. One of the earliest locations in the game is an area known as Snowden, a snowy hillside that leads to a small little village. This area is where you meet the game's two best characters, Skeleton Brothers, Sans, and Papyrus. Papyrus wants to catch a human, so he's laid out all these little traps to try and stop you, which leads to some cute little puzzles and plenty of fun dialogue exchanges. Later, you can even go on a date with Papyrus, which is possibly the greatest gameplay feature of all time. More games should let you date the main characters. I want to plant one right on Nathan Drake's smug, beautiful face. But if I'm being honest with you all, the main reason Snowden makes the list is because it is home to the single greatest enemy in quite possibly the history of video games. Lesser Dog. Look at the pupper! He's so strong and cute and he just wants pets! Pet, 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 pet! Oh, he's a good dog! Oh, he's a good dog! Oh, he's so good! He's so long! So long! I love him so much! He's so good! Oh, he's so good! Oh, he's so good! I love him! <laughs> Alright, so this next entry on the list is a bit more serious than the others in that it makes me cry. It's not so much a winter stage so much as it is a Christmas themed level in a music rhythm game. And it gets me every time. What game you ask? Well, would you believe me if I said it was this one? Elite Beat Agents is a hidden gem of a DS game where you play as a group of secret agents who help encourage people through song and dance. They are often put into outlandish situations like helping a car manufacturer steal his plans back for a new car, or helping a truck driver stop a zombie outbreak by feeding people peanuts. Yes, this is a real game, and it is wonderful. About midway through the game, the silly nature takes a backseat with the stage A Christmas Gift the story of a little girl who lost her father in a car crash and wants nothing but to see her dad one more time. We follow her through the year as she makes her dad a cake for his birthday, cleans out his office, and eventually it ends at Christmas time, where the family is finally reunited thanks to the Elite Beat agents encouraging them with a, quite frankly, not great cover of Chicago's You're the Inspiration, one of the sappiest cornball songs of all time. but I'd be lying if I said I didn't love every loathsome second of it. In a game where secret agents dance to save the world from invading aliens, having something this emotional show up halfway through and punch you in the gut is quite the surprise. But it's easily my favorite part of the whole game. You the a bear she wanted. She wanted a bear and a friend to go with her other bear. She got him for it. It's so beautiful. Complete. Huh? Whose footprints are these? Yeah, you knew this one had to be here. It's one of the most iconic locations in all of video games, let alone snow levels. Shadow Moses Island from Metal Gear Solid is more than just the level. It's the entire game, but I'm mostly just talking about the opening area. Riding that elevator up as you see Snake reveal himself, only to be met with a vicious snowstorm as you sneak around trying to find the next place to infiltrate is an amazing piece of gaming history that I wish I could have experienced when it was new rather than when I did, which was only a few years ago. You don't end up outdoors too often throughout the game, but every time you do, it's pretty amazing. There's the boss fight with the giant tank, the fight with the helicopter, which you can barely see because of the snow and the fog, and my personal favorite, the fight with Sniper Wolf in the trees. It's just a really tense shoot-off, and the snow falling down makes it feel even more intense somehow. And then you kill her and make Otacon cry, and just... Ugh, man. First the little girl's dad, and now Otacon. Ugh. Christmas is cancelled. I can't, I, I can't handle this shit right now. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is quite possibly my favorite 2D platformer ever made, and that is entirely because the level design is so brilliant. Every stage just feels so alive and throws so many unique ideas at you. It's a great game to study if you ever want to get into game design. Mark Brown at Game Maker's Toolkit did a wonderful video all about it. It's great, you should check it out. Yeah. Anyway, with a title like Tropical Freeze, obviously there was going to be some winter levels in there, but there's actually not as many as you'd think. It's only the last world, which is a snow-covered Donkey Kong Island. 
and boy did I have a hard time picking one of these for this list because every single stage in that world is fantastic. I could have gone with the snow-covered beach from Seashore War or the incredible Meltdown Mayhem which takes place inside of a frozen volcano. I love any time a game mixes fire and ice to design stages. It's such a great trope. But ultimately, I decided to go with Cliffside Slide because... Well, look at it! That silhouette style shows up a few times in both modern DKC games, and they're always so pretty to look at. So that alone gives this one the edge over most of the others, but then the fact that you are jumping up the side of a mountain as a goddamn avalanche comes tumbling down on you is just insane. I really don't have that much more to say about it. It's difficult, it's intense, it's beautiful, it's a blast to play. I fucking love Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and this is one of the absolute best stages in the whole game. Pick it up on your Switch if you haven't already. P please, it's so good. The Legend of Zelda series is no stranger to ice-themed areas. I considered going with Snowhead Mountain from Majora's Mask, but let's face it, we all know the best snow-themed area in a Zelda game is Snow Peak Ruins from Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess is far from my favorite Zelda game. I know that's not a popular opinion, but that's my opinion. I think it's good, but not great. However, Snow Peak Ruins is one of the greatest dungeons of all time. The very fact that it takes place in a snowed over mansion is enough of a reason to put it on this list because that's such a unique concept for a Zelda dungeon. Most dungeons take place in some kind of ruins or temple or forest, but this is a place where people actually lived. There's furniture and like rooms and stuff. There's a big yeti man cooking a delicious stew. The story of the two yeti lovers woven throughout the dungeon is also one of the reasons I love it so much. Saving Yetta at the end is such a satisfying feeling, even if the boss is one of the weaker in the game. It is fun to throw around that ball and chain though. The dungeon itself is well designed too. I like fixing these cannons and bashing through ice walls and floor panels and fighting these creepy icemen who kind of look like the Ice Titan from Disney's Hercules. Yeah, okay, sliding block puzzles are never fun, but the rest of the dungeon is A+. I think it's the best dungeon in the game and the best winter themed location in any Zelda game so far. I still haven't played Breath of the Wild, so I don't know if there's a better snow area in that game, so please, please don't tell me about it. I, I don't, I don't want to know about it. Thank you. That fucking music. Mm. Ice Cap Zone from Sonic 3 is one of my favorite stages in any Sonic game, and in my opinion, the best ice-themed level in any 2D platformer, just barely beating out Tropical Freeze. It's just fun, blasting through ice blocks and riding those swingy things to higher areas, so long as you don't run right into a wall of icicles, goddammit. It's also not super slippery and terrible like most 2D ice stages, so it doesn't make me want to throw my Genesis in the bathtub. Plus, it starts with the badass snowboarding section, which is one of the coolest things ever in a Sonic game. I don't even care that you don't control it. It's fucking awesome. Way cooler than when Sonic Adventure tried to do the same thing. Ice Cap in Sonic Adventure is... is so bad. But I'll be real with you. It made it this high on the list because of that music. It's just... Oh, it's so good. It's just... It's so good. Now, before I get to number one, which you might think you've already guessed, but you probably haven't, a few honorable mentions, most of which are actually from games I haven't played, but I needed to mention them before people in the comments start saying, you forgot this one! This is from a game I played and you haven't! Ah, <laughs> uh, that was mean, I'm sorry. You're, you're wonderful, you're beautiful. Here's some, here's some honorable mentions. The Banjo-Kazooie games have some pretty fun looking snow areas, including Hailfire Peak, which is fire and ice. Just like I like it! But I have yet to play either of those games, so... Sorry, Ricky. Final Fantasy VI is another game with a pretty iconic snow area. Even I know the scene of those mechs walking through the mountains as snow falls. But I haven't played it yet, so... Sorry, David. Fendrana Drifts from Metroid Prime looks like a wonderfully unique area for a Metroid game. Samus doesn't often get to explore through snow, so that alone would have probably given it a spot on this list. Well, that and the music is awesome. If I, you know, if I ever actually got that far into Metroid Prime. Sorry, Arlo. 
Routes 216 and 217 in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are not actually a lot of fun to play through, but I remember being really impressed seeing the snow fall and actually having to trudge through the snow the further you got into Route 217 back when the games first came out. So I had to at least mention them, if only because they've stuck with me for so long. Mount Wario, despite also being my favorite thing to do on a Friday night, is one of the best tracks in all of Mario Kart. It just constantly ramps up the further down the mountain you get. It's brilliant! Hey Kirby, do you want to build a snowman? Come on, let's go and Kirby? Kirby, what are you doing? Kirby, oh my god! Oh god, Kirby! Kirby, no, that's somebody, that's a family! Kirby! Kirby, no, oh my god, Kirby! Kirby! Alto's Adventure is an endless runner-style snowboarding mobile game, so technically the whole game is a snow level, but I have to mention it because it is a very special game to me, and more people should check it out. Kingdom Hearts 3 isn't out yet, or at the rate I make these videos, it might be, I don't know. But I can't wait to shield ski down a mountain in Arendelle. Also, I just really like Frozen, and I'm excited to see it in the game, because I don't let whether or not something is popular dictate how I feel about it. When you think of snow levels in Mario, what's the first thing you think of? Probably Cool Cool Mountain from Super Mario 64, right? I don't blame you. It's a fun stage. We all remember sliding down the slide for the first time, or throwing the little baby penguin off the side of the stage because we're all terrible people on the inside. But to me, the greatest ice stage in all of Mario, and all of gaming, is the Freeze Flame Galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy. This probably seems like a strange choice to most people, and to be fair, it is. But let me explain. First of all, the Ice Flower is the most underrated power-up in all of Mario. Being able to skate on water by turning it into ice is so much fun, and the way they use that ability to create unique platforming scenarios like freezing bursts of water into platforms is so wonderful. It's a shame the Ice Flower got turned into basically cold fire flower in the new Super Mario Bros. games because I would have loved to be able to use that again. But while the ice portions of the stage are fun, and the fire portions are also pretty fun, reminding me of Lethal Lava Land but with more fire flower, the main reason this stage makes the number one spot is the mission Hot and Cold Collide. I already mentioned earlier that I love when games combine these two tropes, and this is the main reason why. The level goes back and forth between the fire and ice settings, and ends with one of my favorite moments in all of video games. Using the ice flower to skate across molten lava. This... This is fucking badass. I love every second of this. My only complaint is that I wish there was more of it. The last section isn't very long, and you don't get to combine the ice with the fire as often as I would have liked, but it doesn't matter. Because every time I think about the best ice and even the best lava levels in games, this is the first thing that comes to mind. This section right here. I absolutely love it. <laughs> So yeah, Freeze Flame Galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy. It's not as big as Snow Peak Ruins or Shadow Moses Island. It doesn't make me feel things like Snowed In or A Christmas Gift, and it's not as nostalgic as Ice Cap Zone is. So, you know, maybe it shouldn't be number one on this list. But when I sat down to write this list and come up with the ideas for it, the very first thing I put down was the Freeze Flame Galaxy. So that has to mean something, right? It's the first thing I thought of. It is my favorite snow winter themed level in video games. But what about you? What's your favorite winter or snow themed level in video games? Was it something I put on the list? Was it something I missed altogether? Let me know. I do want to know, despite how mean I was during that honorable mention thing. I should probably, I'm, I'm not going to fix it. I should, but I'm not. I should, but I'm not. And I hope you all have a wonderful holiday, or a wonderful Christmas, or whatever it is you celebrate. If you don't celebrate anything, I hope you just, I hope you just have a great, great December. You know, I know that this year has been a rough one. It's been a rough year, but we made it through. And we're gonna make it through 2019 as well. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to growing this channel, and I appreciate everybody for sticking with me. So please, have a great holiday, and thank you. Thank you so much for watching this. And before I forget, special shout outs to my four patrons, my very, very good buddies, Ricky, Zerb, David, and my own father. You guys are great. If you want to support me on Patreon and get your name mentioned at the end or whatever it is I'm supposed to do as a person on Patreon, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to really do things, you know, consider supporting me. I got a link down in the description below. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays. Here's the end screen.
Hey, thanks for watching. I'm getting a fucking cold again. What the fuck? If you really liked it, uh, I hope you really liked it. Go ahead and uh, like, comment on it, share it with your friends. Make sure I get all them views. All of them. Just all of them. And uh, have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I already said that. Bye.